Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of This Week in Irish History. I'm Dan Murphy from Blue and Gold Illustrated. With me is our senior editor, Lou Samoji. As we do every week, we're going to take a trip back into time here and look at the famous Notre Dame date. This one's December 5th, 1953. Sixty years ago this week was Frank Leahy's final game as a Notre Dame coach. It was on a busy, kind of controversial season that finally ended Leahy's career. Lou, what are some of the things he faced before he hung it up? Well, you know, 1953, he finished for the 11th time in his Notre Dame career. He was here 11 years for the sixth time he finished unbeaten. And if you include his two years at Boston College, he coached 13 seasons, seven of them unbeaten. I don't know if we will ever see anything like that, but that last season, uh, you know, you had situations, he was 45 years old. The Georgia Tech game when they ended Georgia Tech's 31 game, unbeaten streak, he collapsed with acute pancreatitis and he was even administered uh, final rites right? by Father Joyce at halftime in the locker room. Later in the year, the tie against Iowa, Nordin was out of timeouts twice and Frank Verricchioni was the designated fainter to stop the clock in those situations. That got a lot of negative press all across the nation. And then he was unable to make the trip to USC the week before that finale because of health reasons. So that was like six games he had missed in his career for health reasons. And here he is, only 45 years old. I mean, that's when coaches really begin to hit their peak. Some get their first job then, and he was finished. It, it, it's an astounding story, and he's probably the most underrated or overlooked coach in college football history. Of all of the different health reasons and games he missed, what was really the, the end of what caused him to hang up, what ended his career? Well, it depends on who you talk to there. I mean, there, there's a lot of talk, certainly, that, you know, Father Hesper took over as the university president in 1952, and it became something where, you know, two power clashes there. And, you know, sometimes they butted heads on some things, and later they became very good friends and all. But it was two powerful figures, and I don't think Nordin was really big enough for both of them at the time. And certainly the health issues that Leahy that year kind of helped hasten the process out. But, you know, it, it depends on who you talk to on this. You know, late, later years, Lay he said there was nothing to it. People around the program say, oh, yeah, there was plenty to it. Leahy, obviously plenty of unprecedented national championships and undefeated seasons and all these things. Why do you think it is that he sort of gets lost in the shuffle among some of the greats in college football history? I've always referred to it as middle child syndrome. Newt Rockney really, along with Jess Harper, built the program. And then it was always expected to maintain that level. And then when the team or program went down in the 50s, then Air Parsegian rebuilt it. And so then there's that middle child syndrome where you're forgotten in between there. And he also suffered from what I call Phil Jackson syndrome. Phil Jackson was never going to be the coach of the year because there's always the expectation that, the, you know, they're going to be great. But he, he sustained it, and uh, to keep it at that level, the way he did with four national titles, two other unbeaten seasons in 11 seasons, it, it was an astounding feat. Well, December 5th was the final game. It was obviously probably a pretty cold day playing in South Bend. They played Southern Methodist. It was a pretty good team out of Texas. Did he end, go out on a high note? A lot, 40-14, to 14, and uh, the team carried him off the field. I don't know if they sensed maybe that it was the end for him or – after all that they had been through that season, that it was like, here's a final ride. Sort of like Lou Holtz when the Under the Tarnished Dome book came out in 93 and they upset Michigan and the team gave them a ride there, you know, as a sign of support. But, uh, you know, I imagine playing a game now, December 5th at Notre Dame Stadium, that, that's going to be cold. It's already snowing. A couple feet there. on the snow already. I'm sure they'll be happy to be done by then. That's it for this week in Irish history. Our final regular season one will continue during bowl season. But thanks for joining us all year. 